Where are the video inputs? Just a second. Oh wait, I need to close out a Skype. That's what's going on. Ah, there we go. Okay, cool. Why is it so bright? Let's give us some of that. Wait, no, I want this one, All right? Nice, okay, we have video working. <laughs> so this is how I start the paintings. This is so bright. There we go, that's better. Uh, I put them on this embroidery hoop. And this is just like a, a weird brown button down that I got that I thought was like a really nice base color and it's it was like brand new I mean it was used it was in like a thrift store but it has the uh, it had like the original branding tag on it garment tag so I'm just lining it up a little bit so that I know what the like what the format is and then I'm gonna go over this piece with color. So this is like my underpainting. And then um, I use acrylic paint with a fabric medium. And then I color it. <laughs> and then I pull it tight, kind of stretch my canvas, so to speak. And then adjust the cameras. Here we go. I got some like Crayola paint brushes <laughs> because I've been really liking these like cheap synthetic brushes and those had really nice shapes. Um, I, I have too much Crayola stuff near me though at the moment. This is my bismuth yellow that I'm gonna paint with. It's this bright yellow color. And it comes in like a golden acrylic uh, jar. And then where is my, here it is. And then I use quinacridone magenta as my red. And just a second, I have to put, I'm making pasta while I do this right now. is on, ready to paint 
for like seven minutes, then I have to get up again and go get it. But. I kind of always, like this is a pretty abstract process, so I always start a little bit. Sorry, I needed more light like an underpainting still. So with like yellows and bright kind of warm colors to set my ground. It is different depending on what, uh, depending on what ground color the garment's giving me. So this, this garment is like a brown color and I am still going to start with like a bright yellow, but I might, maybe, my mix will be different. And it's interesting because it's not like it's a precise guide of what I'm doing, like the underpainting. It's more like it gives me kind of guidelines for how I'm going to abstract what I'm looking at. And like, what kind of marks do I need to get the directional force of this image or like the to feel something from my image? It's crazy how bright it shows up on the screen when I uh, when I'm using this like super bright bismuth yellow. Bismuth yellow is so bright; it feels like it has white in it, but it's just like a straight pigment, um, which is unusual, and I like that a lot. Hence, why I switch to it for my uh, full mixing palette. I live near a hospital, so there's often ambulances that come by. Oh, I know why this camera looks weird. Just a second, watch. It's gonna be it's gonna be a drastic difference, at least to me. Did I start using this one as my... No. Okay. It was a drastic difference, but it wasn't what I was looking for, so... We're sticking with this one. I never used the starting soon screen, but today I did in case anyone showed up for the initial immediate minute. <laughs> Um, but it really threw off my uh, planning game. Usually I just go straight into this screen so everything's set up before, um, before starting. kind of filling in some larger shapes of things that like, maybe I didn't need some of the marks that I was looking at, or maybe I can uh, find places for these colors to exist on the shirt. 
Mm. Like, I think about, like, how much paint I'm using, too, because it... Over time, these paintings start to interlock and weave into like a full image, um, almost like a like it feels like a graphic or like a, a silk screen. And I like that quality of it. And sometimes it feels even more like a like an armored vest <laughs> of some sort. Um, but it's fun to wear these. It's a lot of fun to wear these. Um, Ooh, almost past the time to be drained. I like the ability that this paint has to cover like a solid space. Uh, okay. Just a second, I'm gonna get the pasta and I will be back. Ah, I wanted to make it so you could see it, but. Uh, if you, uh, I drained the pasta, but I'm going to finish s streaming oh, and the, but there is some pasta if you want it. Okay. Hmm. Kira's watching Gilmore Girls and there's some drama going on right now I, that I can hear. <laughs> oh no, 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 that's fine. Don't worry. I was just. I'm just rambling. I like the marks that you can get just by like kind of scumbling in certain directions. Capable of like filling space. Like, the faster I move my paintbrush, the um, thinner the mark. And you can kind of get it to appear even on the same color, like that brush stroke. And I am trying to kind of replicate the effect of light on these spaces. So right now I'm just using a light color like this yellow to kind of build a ground where I can paint more, um, like a more interesting palette maybe, um, define the local colors, but this is a completely abstract, non-objective painting, so it's like out of my head, but. We have options.
And then sometimes I have to like re stretch my canvas. Oh shoot. That's okay, I'll just have to paint that area. That's how I feel whenever I get paint on another part of the of the uh, garment. I'm like, oh, I guess I have to just have to paint over there now. Uh, one of these, I'm already planning on covering the entire thing, so it doesn't matter if I get paint like on the on any part of it because it's just gonna get covered up. But it's gonna take me a while. Whereas this one, I kind of like the idea of having it sparsely covered in like blocks of image. Part of me wants this to be like a green design, which like I never really work with green. I feel like that's a hard color to like play with in terms of saturation and like warm and cool is pretty hard to differentiate. So we're gonna build up from yellow into green. And um, I might need a few different kinds of blues. So blue, like when you mix blue, it has a very specific quality. Like if you have a cobalt, you're gonna get a cobalt green. Like you're going to get a, a color that responds like exclusively to, um, to the, the blue that you choose. So like this green is definitely like an ultramarine green. It's not like as vibrant as like a cobalt or a thalo blue is going to be. Um, cobalt is kind of toxic. So, hey Lord Fiber, how's it going? I'm painting on a dress shirt. <laughs> And I'm gonna make it like a, a green, mostly, <laughs> a mostly green painting. It's interesting because I've been treating these like figurative paintings, but um, the abstraction involved is like completely not, like it's not from a reference or anything, but I the way I'm thinking about like the shapes and forms is like, arms and legs and light over skin and stuff like that. Um, hello. I like hurt my back earlier, so I'm trying to sit tall, like I'm trying to sit up a bit, um, but it might get the best of me eventually, but I, I like took a bath and that was really helpful. The problem with like going from yellow to green in terms of like planning this piece is that the the green paint is just going to automatically muddy up the yellow that I use. Like, I'll never be able to get back to this, like, warm hue unless I switch brushes. Yeah, yeah, how, how have you been? What have you been up to? It's, it's hard to find time drawing. I just, so I just got this, uh, this is a chalkboard, you know, like you'd have in school or something, and it's great because I can just draw on it and it means nothing because it just goes away at the end. Yeah, yeah, I take I take breaks from drawing too sometimes. Even, even though I, I do draw, I try to draw every day, but it's also my job, so <laughs> it's what I do. So I have to use this fabric medium, which is cool. It makes, 
it makes it a lot easier to get like lines with the paintbrush but it also makes everything a lot more transparent so you can like see through the mark I make and it makes it hard to like like it won't completely cover any of the other marks I've made so it, it leaves a little residue which is cool, but it's not exactly what I was going for right there, so it frustrated me for a second. But I reclaimed it. It's it's all all saved. I have to like hold it up because I can't see. Even though you can see it here, it, this shadow is a lot darker than it looks in the camera. The light right now is really weird because it's a super overcast day. So I'm, tr I'm trying to balance it out, but. It's interesting too because I need to remember that like I can do whatever I want. Some models. Um, so do you have any colleges near you? Um, that tends to be the best way, but also like, or I think we've talked about like that you don't live in like near a city. Um, uh, so I've, I've looked online, I've asked people online if they would sit for me, and sometimes that's nice. It's hard, like, finding people who, you know, you, you'll you get some weird answers if you ask for, like, nude models. Um, but if you just ask for, like, if you just want a person to draw, sometimes I, I look online and I'll, like, just po make a post, be like, I need fa people with faces. That's a post I've made in the past, and um, you'll get you'll get a response, and people are like, "Yeah, I have a face. Um, how much can you offer me?" Or they might be like, "Yeah, I'd be down to sit for a painting or a drawing." Friends and family are good options too. Um, though I I think it takes a special like it takes someone who's like willing to sit to to put up with it <laughs> so some people don't like to sit for a very long time and i think you have to find like maybe someone who works from their computer if someone works from oh it doesn't need to be real ones um one second I'm going to post a link in the uh, in the chat. Right. Twitch, where are you? Okay, here we go. So this is Make Human, which you can find like it has it has figures in it, and you can put them in poses and stuff. It takes a little bit to learn how to use. Um, let me find I can find some photos too. A good collection. Hmm. 
I don't know that second link I sent, so I would check it before you like download anything off of it. Um, but it's got like a lot of poses that seem it seems really good actually. I'm looking at it and it's got a lot of poses. Um, those are all 3D models. You can look up, like, so if you watch... If you look up dance on YouTube or something, like like a, a ballet dance or something, or if you look up, like, uh, one of my professors from my grad school has a group called... Bandaloop. And you can you can look up their work and you could pause it at different phases of the of the dance and that would be a good way to get like figure models. Um, my favorite way to paint the figure though is from life, um, from people, but I that's it's hard to get. Um, but yeah, I like make human because you can choose and you can kind of pose them too. Jeez, the light in here is so crazy right now. It's like dark but really bright too. Like in the room. It's making my colors look really cool though, which is nice. It's a good overcast afternoon. Yeah, I like the Figurosity site. I just found it, so uh, I don't know if it's, if it, like, definitely, like, check the files and stuff if you download anything. But, um, it looks good. It looks really good. I like this because I can kind of draw while also building, like, light environments and color and it it's like super abstract it's like very like free form kind of like you know off the cuff I was just teaching some kids how to do stencils, like uh, how you would make like graffiti and things like that. Um, and it was a lot of fun. We made like abstract stencils, so it was like big shapes. And yeah, I don't know, it was interesting to see like what they came up with. They started using the tape to make uh, lines and stuff. Kids come up with the best uses of art. I think I might use some of this pyrrole red. I'm just gonna push these like yellow and orange colors until until I really feel like I need to start addressing more like shadow colors or the complements of uh, of this space I'm creating. So I'm creating like a green yellow space with some warm low lights. I guess that's how I would describe it. I'm, I'm not good at describing things like that, but. Yeah. 
my figure drawing class this week is kind of putting together all of the uh, assignments from the the semester and they are um, making some really cool drawings. Everyone has like a completely different take on what we've done this semester. It's great, great to see. I like that it's starting to have this kind of, I need more light. It's starting to have this kind of like arc feel, which mirrors these like longer scribble lines that I have. I'm gonna see if I can Do this. But yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me about the, the if you're drawing those poses and stuff. Um, ask me for feedback. I'd be happy to give you some. I started playing this game, the game that Tarves a while back suggested. Genshin Impact, and it's cool. It, I put it off because it's like such a kind of anime-esque game that feels a little fan y to me, which tends to scare me off from things. Um, but it's cool because it's got such a huge world. Um, I might play it at some point on here because I feel like it would be fun to explore, maybe paint some stuff in it. Which was also something that Tarv suggested. Give Tarv's credit for that whole idea. <laughs> okay, I think I can get some like super dark oranges now like we'll get we'll get some like ultra shadow stuff going on okay i guess i even though this is gonna wash out my face a lot i need the super bright <laughs> the super bright light because i cannot see a thing but now it's better I don't want it to ever really breach over into the red, but. Um, is he the one who like does it on the subway and stuff? Like he'll draw a portrait and it just, and it like comes out really um, uh, realistic, representational. That's a good goal. I um, I think there's a lot to it when it when it comes to like someone who can draw that quickly. I think doing um, doing gesture drawings and uh, kind of really paying attention to like what you see is important there. So have you, have I shown you Antonio Lopez Garcia? Um, maybe, yeah. I don't, so I, I don't like the other, the one that I'm talking about. So I'm hoping you're talking about someone different, but also if you like them, that's totally fine too. I just, I have mixed feelings about their work, but let me, um,
Just a second, I'm gonna pull up. Do I have display capture rendered? Oh, cool. I don't know that one. Could you post it in Discord possibly if you have if you have the uh, the power to you? Um, this is Antonio Lopez Garcia, who is the, like this is my goal to be able to draw. Like, so this is a drawing, a charcoal drawing. Um, so is this one? Okay. This is also a drawing. <laughs> Um, let me find another good one. I like this painting a lot. And like these window ones. And this is how he starts. So he kind of looks for a lot of information and shapes. And then he goes into like more specific. Um, but yeah, I like, I like his drawings a lot. He's from Spain, I believe. get back to the green side of things super super clean green was what I wanted but I don't think I'm getting it okay here this is cleaner darker cleaner darker green. yeah yeah Antonio Lopez Garcia is like um, he's inspired so many people um, so many painters at least I, a lot of my professors in the past have been, um, have been greatly inspired by him, so I've, like, adopted their admiration. Let's see. It's kind of a muddy green color. Probably need more yellow. I like to contradict some of the marks that I've done in the underpainting. So like if I have marks going this way, I like to do something with the color that um, kind of shows me something new about those marks. So like since they were going this way and they were curving, I am now using marks that are curving this way. And that's creating this kind of like voluminous form. It's like turning form around the outside of the that area um and i think that's just really interesting it's fun to see stuff like that and then i'm, I'm gonna lose the form but um that's like a really especially for like i said this is like i'm thinking of this as like figurative almost in some of the ways that like the shapes build and the structure of things um and i think uh I think that's a huge part of it, using mark to like describe the direction of form. So if you use a lot of lines and marks going one way, um, they're going to 
they're going to show you something different about the form. So like maybe if I turn these lines going this way, I can start to make it feel like this part's coming forward towards me. And then I might put like a dark line on the back edge and it pushes it back. You can play with that a lot too. So it, it gets like color and mark really like when you combine them, you can start to talk about like the edge between objects, like where something overlaps, um, how it creates like a harsh edge where the shadow is. And then like it almost fades away where my skin is. My my back is getting tighter and tighter as I work. Probably it's probably because of my chair. I I drove yesterday and it hurt a little bit. Be and careful, Davey. Yeah, I if it gets bad, I'll I'll stop. But I want to keep keep going, keep painting. Um, do you ever have back pain, Lord Fiber? Are you watching a video about me? I know! I loved that. I was like, hey, this is Baby. <laughs> yeah, I'll show it to you later. Kira's watching a video about ADHD and dyslexia, which... That's me. I have both of those things. And it's weird where you see them like come into your life when you're an adult. Like, I think it's affected me more as an adult, or at least, like, I mean, it. I didn't do that well when I'm, like, in school, in grade school, but it, it definitely has, it, like, shows its head more meaningfully in adult life. So this is kind of what I was meaning about, like, I need a better blue. Just recovering from a sickness? Oh, I'm sorry. Was it, is it, was it bad? I, d I don't like getting sick, it feels... I always, like, I always feel, like, frustrated that I'm sick, I also feel bad, and then I feel like I'm losing time, and then I feel all sorts of other stuff, but it's always nice when it ends and then you finally get like a, maybe a day to relax in between things. Okay, now that darkened everything too much. I keep looking at my face and I'm like, I want it to be lighter or darker. Okay, I got rid of something, but considerably quick. Okay, that's good. I I like I like quick illnesses. I the other day I had a migraine that was so bad that I actually like threw up. Um, I get migraines, like I have chronic migraines, but I haven't had one that bad in a really long time. Um, 
Kira and I have been making a point of like eating healthily recently um, or trying to. We've been having like smoothies and stuff with a lot of fruit. Ooh, I really like this weird brown green color I just found. It does exactly what I needed it to. Pyrol orange is such a nice color. This this like super orange color. It like looks a lot darker than any other orange that I can mix. It's this one. Um, but it's really powerful and it like does this cool like kind of um, neutral green. Nice. I I will keep my fingers crossed for you, and maybe I'll see you tomorrow. I want to stream more this weekend. Try to try to do it, but I will. I'm excited to find out. kind of flattening out this space even though I was talking about how much I liked that like curve I I really like flat shapes on these because they're going on someone's body like it's it's going to be worn so like kind of using the space differently than I would a like representational painting or like trying to think of it less like it's three-dimensional and more like it's uh, a mix of a pattern and an image Are you excited to find out? Are you anxious? Both? I'd probably be both, honestly. <laughs> I'm anxious about everything, though. I have a lot of confidence. I pretty much use the same brush for these whole paintings, but I like the, like how just moving it faster or slower, like playing with the tempo in which I paint makes like a drastic change in how the marks appear. And like, just gives me a lot of leeway. I'm still trying not to bridge into like fully red. I know on the screen, this area kind of looks like a red color, but it's it's still closer to orange in my book. So I'm just I'm trying to keep the local hues somewhat homogenous for now. So that way I can like really develop the feeling of shadow and light as I go on. Um, they all have like parts of each other in them. I'm thinking a lot about, there's a painter named Andrew Forge. Ooh, just a second. I'm gonna look him up.
So there's a painter named Andrew Forge who has these like really cool color spaces. Like they, they almost look like landscapes or something. Um, I think a lot of them are actually like, like I think this is a tree in this space. Um, I think a lot of them are um, kind of from his head, but just the color in these really inspires me. Uh, this is one of my professors from my grad school, um, Anne Gale, but she was taught by Andrew Forge. And you can kind of see like the, the effect of these on her, um, but yeah. I really like those pieces a lot. And that's who I think of a lot while I'm working on these. Though I'm using more like directional mark and more explicit shapes and things and more like representational kind of effects. I'm gonna make a video next week about a painter that has really inspired me this last year um, named Hyman Bloom, who's like from Boston, from where I am from, which is cool. See if I can get an even lighter, but still kind of muddy orange. That's what I want. I probably should get a couple different types of yellow and a couple different types of blue with the precision that I'm looking for, but I, I like having this like limited range for my language. Yeah, yeah, I'm from Boston. So I, I live in Massachusetts and I last summer I when I first started streaming um, I was in living in Boston and then now I live outside of Boston but yeah I, I didn't realize we never established that but yes I live I live kind of in Boston Grew up here my whole life, and then I went out to Seattle for uh, for grad school. But then I moved back here so I could be here for my mom because I missed her and she's uh, alone. My brother lives in South Carolina, which is like on the south of the of south of the north yeah that's what i was about to say but <laughs> it's like north of georgia i'm like starting to get to a place where you can't see it okay yeah there we go um, I didn't go to college in Boston. I went to college in North Dartmouth. So actually where I teach now, I, um, I went to undergrad there 
and then I went to college in Seattle. Um, but Kira went to school in Boston. She went to Northeastern, which is a university in Boston. Uh, Did you look at uh, colleges in Boston at all? I don't know if that's if that how far out of the. <laughs> I feel like that's you probably didn't, but <laughs> since you're asking, Ooh, that's a really nice. Can I capitalize on this feeling I'm getting from here? Yes, I can. Sometimes I do things and I'm like, you know, it's like an affirmation that I feel good about my painting ability. But like this, this little section right here is just a nice color combination. <laughs> Maybe I can lead us into something else over here with a slightly bluer, darker green. Sometimes I neutralize my dark colors just so that they still seem like the color that I'm looking at, but th because they're grayer or more neutral, um, they get darker. But when you juxtapose them to the other colors, they just still look green. Like this, this is kind of a pretty brown green here. Uh, in the camera, it looks kind of like blue black, but in life, it looks green. <laughs> What do you think of when you think of Boston? That's something I'd be curious to know. I guess colleges are, are a huge part. My So my brother and my... <laughs> yeah, they do. Um, so my brother and my dad used to... So my brother went to Tufts University, which is um, in, Cam in like Somerville, near Cambridge and stuff. Um, and he and my dad used to coach baseball there. And uh, then my brother taught at Tufts for a while, and then his wife taught at Tufts. Um, yeah, there are some good colleges in Boston, some really good schools. Not just Ivy Leagues, but like also just like uh, Berkeley, Massart. Northeastern, but the problem with American higher education, which I was just writing a teaching philosophy statement today, and th this kind of plays into it, but like there is a problem where it's just it's way too expensive. It's definitely not as good as as it pretends it is. And this is coming from a professor, so <laughs> take it as you please. But reputation means nothing to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of my one of my mom's favorite movies too. Um, yeah, was he at Harvard or MIT? Both of those schools are, are really good. My brother almost went to MIT, but then um, he got a better scholarship to Tufts, so he chose that one. Plus, I don't think he liked the idea of doing a project for your entire undergrad. He's more of a researcher. MIT, okay, yeah.
MIT is really cool. I like I like what they do. They like their um, they have a lot of art events, so they'll have a lot of art talks, artist talks, and like they'll usually be kind of like socially driven, socially or like culturally driven. Um, and it's just really nice to go and see them when it's not COVID. Haven't gone to see anything all year, but. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, I definitely live in a very academic world, um, being in Boston and around my family's all teachers, so... My mom is a high school math teacher, even though I'm not very good at math. <laughs> My dad was too, and then uh, my brother and his wife are college professors for math also. And then I took the family business up, but I do art. <laughs> some of these shapes that are starting to pop up over here like with these lines sometimes I can use the the really in like non-objective mark of something to create new spaces and if I just like flatten out an image so just cover everything up with one color it like turns into something else completely and I like that. I like that ability to like re, re, you know, terraform the map. Although I don't really like thinking of it as a map because that has like a lot of semiotic concerns. Okay, here's, here's some of this red and then if I introduce a little bit of yeah I I feel really grateful for like the life I've led and the people in it including like uh, my family and all the teachers in my life you know it's, it's great having teachers everywhere because I just feel very like education is so prominent in my life Kind of making a shape down here, see if I can make this wall. I called it a wall, that means it's a wall. <laughs> oh, I don't know if Conan O'Brien is from Boston. Um, Kira might know. Kira, is Conan O'Brien from Boston? Yeah, I think he's from... Kira said yes, he's from he's from near us. Yeah. That's interesting, I never knew that. <laughs> We've been having mixed feelings about him or uh, pretty negative feelings about him lately. Um just because like some of his jokes seem like okay boomer. Yeah. Yeah, that's like all talk show hosts, man. Yeah, all talk show hosts. But <laughs> however, it's like he, I don't like his humor, but he does say the right stuff. Like, yeah, I like how everyone's like, John Oliver has good points, but he's not funny. Yeah. He's not funny. <laughs> not 
But also, I think that's like possibly cultural. What is cultural? Uh, John Oliver not being funny to us. What do you mean cultural? Uh, like British humor turning into American TV is. Yeah. An interesting combination. Yeah, well, it's also sometimes I think like, oh, there sometimes you have people like them that are just like delivering the the what's been written for them. And some True. Like that. And like his delivery, uh, yeah, his delivery is like the same all the time. Yeah, though I would. Say but also, I don't make jokes. So. Yeah, that's not a big deal. Yeah. You noticed it too. Lord Fiber noticed it too. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So it's not just us. <laughs> I do like his points though. Like I like listening to his show sometimes. I feel like there needs to be an in-between of this like orange color and this brown color and the yellow. So I'm gonna try to make it somehow. It's slightly lighter. That works. Again, I'm tilting it up so I can see the light. See in the light what's going on. What's cool is I washed one of these in the washer today, which I've been I'm I've been pretty confident that they're like machine washable. Um, but I wasn't positive, and now I'm positive because it, it came out like perfect. It was it was done with thick paint and not completely heat set in, and it like didn't even wash out. So don't get acrylic paint on your clothes because it just won't come out. That's that's the moral of this story. Unless you're painting your clothes the way I am, then go for it. I want to expand this design like when I move into the next section. So what I might do tomorrow is I might take the hoop off and then I'll move down and do another black and white painting underneath this one and then I'll combine them. Uh, but I don't know how big I want this shape to be. It's kind of interesting it being on the back in just this little spot. So I have to really think about the like format of what I'm doing. Uh, what I might do right now is I might pull out the white. You know, get some Get some neutral light colors going. And then I'll probably wrap up after that. I've got these giant jugs of paint now. Because acrylic paint is slightly more affordable than oil. Um, it's, it's wild because I never thought I'd be like working with acrylic paint a lot, but this is the only way you can really like paint on clothes and have it stay. Actually, I feel like oil paints wood, but I also feel like that would just not do well. Like having an oil painting on your back and just like slowly eat through the shirt. <laughs> Okay. 
try to get it a little bit more, a little less orange. I want it more green, a green white kind of color. So I'm kind of using the white to like desaturate this area a little bit. So it might make something else feel a little bit more vibrant. It's nice too because when I start to finally like build up that pile of color, that pile of paint, I can get more brush strokes to show up. And I like having brush strokes. It's like it's an article of clothing, so if it looks screen printed or something, it feels like unspecial to me. <laughs> but this way, it feels like a painting. Intentionally so. It's nice. See if I can get like a super blue light color. I want it to be even lighter. Okay, let's. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I got like a bunch of muddy color down in the corner, but you can't see it, so it's fine. Didn't happen. here and just kind of like emphasizing the gray world that's underneath. So when I use white when I'm painting, it tends to be with like a cooler color just because um, that's the best way to like naturally uh, lighten that uh, a cool color because otherwise you're going to like muddy it up. You're gonna make it turn like green or purple Whereas like white you're going to retain that like pure kind of coolness Okay. 
Let's see where I can put. Some of this dark. It's interesting too because when you use white on blue, it starts to feel like it's of something manufactured. Like it doesn't, it's not natural really to see like these, this kind of blue color. Um, unless it's like, uh, this right now is reminding me of a chair I painted a long time ago. But. I don't have that painting anymore, otherwise I would show it. But the chair was like this blue color. It was like an Ikea chair. Are there Ikeas around you, um, Lord Fiber? Does the chain spread that far? It's like a furniture store. I like this little gap I have right here. Okay. I'm probably gonna wrap up soon just so I can heat set this and then, um, and then see if I can like add more to it tomorrow. I might expand down a little bit and maybe out and just see like what kind of, like what is this? This is like a graphic or like a graphic from a graphic tee. Um, but we'll see where it goes. I'll post a picture of it tonight. I also might want to stream some uh, games tomorrow. I feel like the more I do it, the more comfortable I'll get with it. How is it spelled? Um, I K E A. Okay. Ikea. <laughs> I think that's what you were asking about. light blue, so we're gonna come back. In America, it's like very, like, iconic in terms of what, like, our furniture looks like. You, you'll always, like, you can, you can tell, like, I think most people have some element of IKEA furniture in their home. Because it's, it's pretty cheap and it's assemblable, so you can like fit it in your car when you move someplace. At least people my age. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. They're an interesting company to learn about because like they are like kind of the symbol of like minimal home design right now. Um. But... Yeah, like if you look up tiny houses, I feel like those always have a lot of Ikea furniture in them. <laughs> but it makes sense that they're not around you.
All right. So I think I'm going to end now. I think so. And then I will probably be back tomorrow. I've been feeling pretty good about streaming, especially because it's starting to be the end of the semester. So it's less less time intensive, but more like thought intensive, if that makes sense. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's good to see you. And I'm, I'm wishing you luck on your college when you find out. I don't know like what the time zone difference is between us, but hopefully you find out before I see you sometime. Yeah. If you're around. <laughs> but okay, I'll talk to you later.